football, the game of the people, yet the people rarely actually have a say. Well, that was until the funny, raw and real football show came around. And now we don't just listen to the people at the top. We also listen to you on the ground. And that's what we're going to do right here on The Social House Nairobi. So on today's episode right here at Copper the Urban Grill, we talk to a man who has his roots, hands, fingers in the ground with the people. Multimedia journalist Jeff Kinyanjui is in the house. A pleasure having you as always. What is the word on the ground concerning football? Uh, well, I think the biggest issue is uh, you know, uh, the legality of the just completed the uh, FKFPL season. We're not sure if uh, you know, we'll have dust presenting uh, us in the CAF Champions League. Who's going to represent us in the CAF Confederation Cup? You know, there's a lot of confusion, so we really aren't sure if we are going to send teams to uh, you know, the CAF competitions. Mm. What have you learned about the situation regarding this stalemate? Well, I think there's still uh, a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, the transition committee, previously the caretaker committee seems to be, there seems to be a lot of infighting within themselves. Well, initially they were saying they are in talks with the FIFA. Uh, well, that hasn't bore any fruits yet. And we're not sure if it will bear any fruits as, you know, anytime soon. Uh, they are talking about two or three months. Everything will be settled. But, you know, we have an election coming up, uh, a waiting game. Oh, Who is going to be the next president? Uh, which set of leaders are coming into power, you know, and that is playing into football, and it's, you know, it's really a sad situation to be in. What do the people say about this transitional committee? How, what's the feeling? Well, initially, honestly, they were doing really well, you know, uh, sending grants to clubs as low as the, you know, as the county league, uh, division one league, but then again, they realized that is really a huge, huge gamble because we have a lot of teams, so they capped it up to the third tier, and you know. There are cases all over, you know, there are teams which gave walkovers as a result of that. You know, there were huge delays in sending the grants. So initially they were doing really well. You know, teams in the third tier, second, I mean, third tier, fourth tier, were not used to getting money from anyone. Mm -hmm. So when the caretaker committee came into power, they were doing all that. But it was, you know, a really huge budget and they could not sustain it. A few months into that, you know, uh, the infighting and all that, uh, people are losing uh, hope with all that. You know, initially when they came into power, People thought we are going to see a lot of changes. To be fair, we saw a lot of changes. Is there any time we have seen as many walkovers as we did this season in this country? Never. And you know, it's all it's it's all politics. You know, uh, we have several teams who, who are still pro FKF, and we are we have other teams that are pro the committee. So we have a situation where you know, as far as, as recent as last weekend, we had an, uh, an NSL team giving a walkover which will not happen you know, in the second tier league with all the stakes at hand. We have a promotion relegation playoffs coming up, not really for lack of funds, but you know, just to favor another team. It's such a sad situation. How would you rate the performance of the, as you pointed out, caretaker come transitional committee? That's so easy for me, a four out of 10. That's a bit harsh. It's not harsh. If I was harsh, I would have given them even one or two. Well, they tried a that? bit, uh, but you know, there's a lot of politics going on and uh, most of them have gotten sucked into it. Uh, therefore, I don't think they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. By, by this time, we should have you know, finished all this pull and tug and if they are really working for football. Because I don't think they are really working for football, but most of them are just you know, looking out at themselves and it's really sad. Remember, we are talking to multimedia journalist Jeff Kinyanjui, who uh, is well versed with what the fans are actually saying on the ground. So we're trying to keep it as raw as possible. You say they failed. And we're hoping they sort themselves out. We come back with FIFA. And the rumor is, when we do come back, we could come back with KPL. I, I honestly don't think so. Um, KPL is trying to position itself. That's the reality that everyone doesn't want to talk about. KPL, as it is right now, is a briefcase company. They're really trying hard to come back. And it's, you know, it's just a few people, not, not really KPL as we used to, to know it. You know, KPL uh, previously was a company that was fully owned by the clubs, you know, and the clubs were running it. Uh, but at the moment, I think it's uh, just Jack and uh, Taiwo who form uh, KPL. Previously, it was the Kenyan Premier League Limited. Now they're calling it Kenya Premier League uh, Limited. If you're wise enough and you've been involved in incorporation of companies, you'll know that's really a totally different company that uh, they're trying to set up and, you know, to position themselves. So I really honestly don't think KPL is coming back. I would have loved KPL to come back, you know, when the league was privately managed, we had 
you know, a very, very well-run league, professionally run. We had corporate supporting uh, football in, in the country. But as it is at the moment, they are really trying to position themselves. And I'm not sure if they're going to come back. It's very interesting. Now, seeing as you've come after you've seen a few episodes, I'm sure you watched the Jack uh, Guda Taiwo episode. What were your thoughts on the plan and the strategy? Brilliant. You know, uh, for the years I've been involved in Kenyan football, I've never seen uh, any strategy. You know, they have a, a five-year plan of what they want to achieve, which is really good on paper. But how, how are they going to achieve that? Uh, Taiwo says he has American investors ready to pump in money into the KPL. But investors want return. What, what returns are they going to have in Kenyan football that, as it is at the moment, is dead? How long will it take for them to get the returns from the investment they are putting? Are they, uh, do we have really, who are those investors? You know, on paper, he talks big, and I have nothing against KPL or Taiwo as a person who actually is a brilliant mind. He seems to be what we need in Kenyan football. Uh, but Kenyan football is really political. Uh, he tried before, even speaking to uh, you know, the current uh, federation uh, setup. He didn't succeed. And if you interrogate him further, he's telling you that if they're not ready to work with us, uh, we are going to form our own league. He was there before, and he wouldn't want such a situation again. So he, they have really good ideas on paper that can only be incorporated if they work together with the government and the federation itself, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. All right, well, you're getting feedback from a man whose ear is well <laughs> directed to the ground. So here's another interesting aspect. Let's take a step down to the NSL. Drama, I'm talking drama, bribery, match fixing, threats, Mohoroni's Adagala. What's going on in that league? You know, the NSL has always been uh, used to such kind of drama. But now it's, it's getting out of hand because of the money involved. And I'm not talking money involved in, you know, winning the league. There's no money involved in winning the second tier league. Uh, just, you know, the promotion to the FKFPL. Again, why are they fighting to join the FKFPL? What are you getting, going to get from that? You know, there's no, it's not like before where we had clubs getting grants. Uh, you know, we are not even sure if Tasca will represent us in the CAF Champions League. So why are you really fighting so hard? to join the KPL, and that's the, the question that everyone is afraid to answer. So what's this money you're talking about? The NSL is nowadays a match fixer's haven. Before, it was only the players and a few referees who were fix, fixing matches. But now we have club chairmen, of course I can't mention them. No, no. We have club chairmen and owners of teams that are fixing matches, and it's big money involved. That's why we even have clubs in the Division 2 and 3 that are really fighting hard just to be at the NSL level. Because at the NSL level, it's very easy for you to fix games and get a lot of money. So they're not really fighting to be in the top tier. They're fighting to be at a level that it's very easy for them to fix matches and get money. How do we find ourselves here then? Of course, because of the confusion that we have in the, in the, in the, in the football, in football in our country right now. Oh, Jeff, that gives us leeway to do what's happening in the NSL. And of, of, course, of course, there are people who are gaining from the confusion. That's why they are very happy with the current uh, situation we find ourselves in, because they are making a lot of money from it. What would the fans like to see? I think the way forward is just for all the stakeholders to put their egos and private walls aside, just sit down and work for football. Because as it is at the moment, I don't think there's anyone who's working for football. I mean, this is something that they can sit and solve if they put their issues aside. Because if you ask me, uh, we find ourselves in this situation uh, after we found ourselves in this situation after AFCON 2019, where we had uh, the FKF president Nick Mwendo uh, fighting then with the former PS, sports PS, Kaberian parliament. That is why we're in this situation. It's not really a war to save Kenyan football or make Kenyan football great. There were personal wars. There's someone at the top who didn't want Nick Mwendo and the current FKF uh, setup. And th at the same time, the federation did not want to work the guys that were the ministry at, the, at that time. You really believe that's the case and not the case of the poor constitution and what that administration did? Again, uh, football in Kenya is run by the FKF branches, not even the NEC or the FKF president. So whatever, uh, of course, the, the current FKF constitution is, is hogwash. And it's a good thing that they're trying to change it. But who are they trying to change it for? It's the FKF branches and they'll, they'll have none of that. There was a, an idea that was floated that perhaps we should, um, by actually a caretaker committee member, a transitional committee member, who's actually pointed it out that we should possibly go 
and change the constitution and ensure that the president seek election from the grassroots? That has been the case, actually. Uh, only that they kept it to Division One. Yet we have uh, the regional leagues, the sub-county leagues, the county leagues. Uh, you know, they do that so that they can make it cheaper for themselves to get into power. Because how many people are, going, are you going to bribe to get into power? And why, why do you want to be the FKF president? Yeah. You know, in other countries, I was actually reading this morning, uh, in other countries, the FA president is appointed. He doesn't seek election. He's appointed by the, a board of members. For instance, in Malta, um, you know, they've put a cap of, I think it's around 10 million Kenyan shillings. If you want to fight for any sporting federation job, you put a bond of 10 million shillings such that if there's any corruption involved in that federation, then they take that. Perhaps that is something that we need to consider in Kenya as well. It means we'll have people of integrity, not people who are going to power, you know, to, to, look, out, to look out after themselves. That is something we might consider introducing in future. But, you know, again, like I said, football in this country is run by the FKF branches. As a journalist and one who hears the fans, what's the first big step we should take if we are to heal this football? Like I said before, uh, you know, just put our personal issues aside, our egos aside, and just sit down and work for football. Because as it is, everyone is pulling in a different direction. And like I said, uh, you know, they're just waiting to see who will get into power. Is it Traila? Is it Ruto? If Ruto comes back, uh, probably whatever the FKF transition committee and the caretaker committee have tried doing before for the past, I think, six months now, will be work under the drain. Ah, so there is a political connection in spite of what uh, Nyamwea, former President Nyamwea, said on this show. Interesting. Jeff Nyanjui, multimedia journalist and, of course, a man who hears the voice of the people, came here to ensure that we did too. Fans, we've heard you. And now we know exactly what the people in charge are supposed to do. Thank you for your time, my brother. Thank you so much.